Mr. Investalot, welcome back to the channel, baby. So there's instant news come out. It's just been released and I can bring you the news you need. So Genomics recently tweeted, they said, ACMG MTG21 is here. Attendees, our product theater is now available for on-demand viewing. Don't miss Dr. Nick Hill, Sahaj Pal, Augusta University discuss how optical genome mapping with Sapphire is 100% concordant to the gold standard for prenatal testing. Like it. And I can bring you this because I'm in there, baby. So if you click the link, this is where you come to. You can't really get in. But because we've already paid for it, thank you very much to everybody that donates. Thank you for supporting this channel because we can now stream it for you guys. Oh yeah, we in there, baby. Don't worry, your boys gotcha. This is what it looks like, baby. It's a 31 minute video and I'm going to let this run. But before we begin, if you want to help me get into other events like this, because that's all I want to do. I want to keep providing you with the best information, create the most valuable and entertaining content. Please join my Patreon group. You can join any level and it really helps me to create content every single month. Or you can join my channel memberships. It's only 99 cents up here and it really helps me out. Thank you so much and I'd appreciate a thumbs up and a subscribe. Love you guys and I hope you enjoy. And always remember, none of this is financial advice. It's for entertainment only. So let's begin. Let's watch this. All right, guys. Hope you enjoy. Let's get started. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Alex Hasty. I'm the Vice President of Clinical Affairs at BioNanogenomics. And today I'd like to introduce the uh, BioNanogenomics uh, technology for optical genome mapping uh, for the detection of high resolution structural variation. Uh, I want to start off with a timeline to put chromosomal studies into perspective. Um, the first observation of chromosomes and the naming uh, started before the before 1900. Uh, in the 1970s, uh, uh, chromosome banding techniques were developed, which allowed uh, the uh, determination of uh, genetic disorders based on observing chromosomes. Uh, more recently, chromosomal microarrays have been uh, invented and used for higher resolution uh, detection of uh, genetic disorders, uh, genetic abnormalities. Um, and over the last decade or so, um, and various NGS technologies have been uh, have been used um, to to try to uh, further unravel genetic uh, disorders. Um, however, not not able to uh, truly uh, replace uh, karyotyping and, and microarray and, and uh, uh, fish technologies for structural variation and copy number variation so far. Um, in the last few years, uh, bionanogenomics has uh, been commercialized and uh, applied to a study of uh, chromosomes and structural variation um, and, and uh, in, the, in the context of genetic uh, disorders. I'd like to tell you more about the bionanogenomics optical genome mapping technology. Um, this uh, video on the left is showing really the, the, the foundation of the technology, which is uh, the use of a nanochannel array. Uh, the, the, the image on the bottom right is a, an electron micrograph of the nanochannel array. Um, these are silicon wafers that are etched with uh, a series of parallel nanochannels that are about uh, 35 nanometers wide um, and are extremely uniform. You can see in this electron micrograph how, how straight these channels are. Um, these channels are used to linearize very long DNA molecules, uh, which is what you're seeing in this video. Um, the video shows first uh, DNA in solution right here, and then it's being pulled uh, into the nanochannel array by unwinding the DNA in these structures and pillars and then feeding the DNA molecules into channels. These are micro channels and then finally uh, nano channels where the, the, once the, the nanochannels are loaded, the electrophoresis is paused and the DNAs are imaged. And the image uh, here is what the data actually looks like. The blue uh, lines represent very long and very uniformly linearized DNA molecules. And they're labeled uh, with a, a floor for a green floor for that allows us to, to mark and recognize what part of the genome we're looking at. Uh, this is all done in the Sapphire instrument. Um, this is a slide uh, courtesy of Alex Hoyshen from Radboud University Medical Center um, com uh, that, that compares and puts uh, the bio-nano optical genome mapping technology into perspective. 
Um, it's very analogous to a karyotype where you uh, are able to look at a chromosomal um, banding pattern um, from a cell and that banding pattern is used to recognize what part of the genome is being observed. Um, and just like that, um, our BioNano optical genome mapping technology uh, produces a banding pattern where these uh, fluorophores are added at a, si a specific six base sequence motif. And then in the nano channel array, we can image and measure the distance between these sequence motifs and this pattern of sequence motifs um, can allow us to recognize what chromosome we're looking at. Um, this uh, so is very analogous to a, a karyotype and can do all of the same things that a karyotype can do. However, we have about 10, uh, 1,000 more bands uh, than a karyotype, and the linearization allows us to find uh, copy number variations at about 10,000 fold higher uh, sensitivity. So this is the BioNano uh, workflow, which I'll briefly describe. Uh, the workflow starts with isolation of very high molecular weight DNA from samples, uh, then labeling that DNA with an enzyme that recognizes a, si a specific six base sequence motif, um, data collection on a sapphire chip, which contains the nano channel array and is done in the sapphire instrument. The images of the molecules are processed and the DNA uh, molecules as well as the positions of the fluorophores are extracted. Then those uh, single molecules are used um, to detect structural variation by comparing them to one another, building either a de novo assembly or uh, just a reference comparison to find all classes of structural variation. Uh, in parallel, there's a, a second pipeline that's a copy number variation uh, pipeline, which is very analogous to a microarray, where we can just detect copy increases and decreases. Uh, these two pipelines are run in parallel. And then a final pipeline for uh, annotating structural variants that allows us to know if those structural variants affect genes and how frequent they are in a control population. The technology can detect all uh, classes of uh, structural variants variation. Um, insertions and deletions are found by an increase or decrease in uh, the, the size of a DNA segment uh, down to 500 base pairs. Um, copy number, uh, repeat array, um, uh, repeat arrays can be measured accurately because uh, DNA molecules being used are long enough to easily span uh, a repeat array and, and uh, anchor uh, in, into the flanking regions of the DNA. Um, duplications can be detected by the recognition of a pattern in a, a, a sample or a case's map uh, occurring twice, where in the reference it occurs only once. Um, in, in this case, the duplication uh, is a, a tandem direct duplication, so the first copy here and the second copy right next to it in the same orientation. We can determine the orientation by that mapping of the, of the DNA pattern. Uh, if this duplication was inverted, we would call that as well. If it was inserted on another chromosome, we would call that as well. Um, the technology detects balanced uh, structural variants like translocations and inversions. A translocation occurs when a, a, a map from the case aligns uh, on one chromosome on the left side and another chromosome on the other side. An inversion is a case where the uh, the labeling pattern is is oppositely oriented with respect to the reference pattern. Um, so this table shows uh, structural variant classes uh, that are clinically relevant. Um, and just quickly, uh, we detect um, all types of aneuploidies. Uh, we detect uh, monosomies and trisomies. Um, we don't currently detect triploidy and tetraploidy um, whole genome. Uh, but we will uh, be working on that. Um, we can detect uh, ring chromosomes. Um, we can detect uh, copy number vari vari variants, such as uh, deletions and duplications, whether they're interstitial or terminal, um, as well as insertions, uh, balanced or unbalanced translocations, inversions, whether they're pericentric or paracentric. Um, we are working on regions of homozygosity. Uh, we will be adding that to uh, a software uh, update in the future. 
Um, this technology is very good at detection of uh, macro satellite, micro satellite repeat expansions and contractions, um, such as uh, FSHD and Fragile X. Um, and we do not, bio optical genome mapping does not detect single nucleotide variants or indels. Uh, that is uh, for uh, sequencing uh, technologies instead. Um, and just one example case study to, to help understand how the, the data looks and how it's processed. Um, any, any data set from, from BioNano would be displayed in a whole genome overview on a circus plot. The circus plot shows the cytobands on the outside ring. Um, the next ring shows all of the structural variants, interstitial structural variants that are detected in this case. Um, the next ring shows the copy number profile um, for the case showing two copies of all of the autosomes, one copy of each X and Y, and then the inner circle would show any translocation fusions if there were any. Um, on an average constitutional case, we would detect about 6,000 structural variants, most of these being polymorphic. Um, so the software has a tool for, um, for filtering. And so we can just remove polymorphic variants by setting a filter that, um, that asks, asks to see only variants that are absent from a control database. Once you do that, um, and also uh, uh, overlap uh, the structural variants with a list of genes that are clinically relevant, um, we can just quickly uh, prioritize down in this case to three structural variants remaining. Uh, we're able to just hover over these dots and figure out what genes they're affecting and how large they are. And then if we see one of interest, we can just click on that and we can zoom in on another genome browser, which will uh, show exactly what gene we're looking at. In this case, DMD, we can see that in this case, the case has a deletion, 164.9 kilobase pairs. Uh, in that deletion is exon 45. So this is a deletion of the exon 45 DMD. Um, so that's uh, where I'll stop with the introduction, and then we'll have a, uh, a talk from uh, Nikhil uh, Zahajpal. Um, this is the uh, 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 Georgia Esoteric Lab in Augusta, Georgia. Um, it's led by Rob, Robbie Cole. Um, during uh, 2020, um, they have uh, implemented uh, SARS-CoV testing, uh, CoV-2 testing, um, really uh, break, breakneck speed. Um, uh, they, they, uh, you know, went through the process as soon as uh, emergency use authorization was allowed, um, and uh, they have been um, very busy testing uh, uh, the lo local community for. SARS-CoV-2. Um, Nikhil uh, Sahajpal was a, a key member of uh, implementing that testing. Um, and in the midst of all of that, he was also able to publish uh, 12 uh, papers uh, since the, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, he uh, also, um, if that wasn't enough, he also led the implementation of a new technology in the uh, Georgia Esoteric uh, lab, um, which is the BioNano Sapphire system. Um, he, uh, he has been using the system for many different applications already and, and already has uh, preprints or publications on several applications. Uh, he's a part of a study on acute myeloid leukemias um, using optical genome mapping. Uh, an, another study which uh, he's the first author on um, looking at the host genome structural variation in patients that, uh, that, that respond poorly or, or well to a COVID-19 infection. Um, and, and, and also has, a, has another uh, commentary on using optical genome mapping uh, for prenatal genomic analysis, which he will uh, now be telling us uh, more about um, uh, work, work that he's done on, on prenatal uh, testing uh, analysis. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Hasty, for this generous introduction. It is my privilege to share our study at this forum. 
I will be talking about next generation cytogenomics. And before I begin, I would like to say that the term next generation cytogenomics has rather become synonymous with BioNano's optical genome mapping. To put that in context, I will be discussing the utility of optical genome mapping in the characterization of prenatal cases. The current scenario of prenatal testing as recommended by ECMG, ACOG and ISU OG is that prenatal testing is offered to every pregnant woman regardless of age or previous history of pregnancies. In that respect, NIPT screening is the standard of care and for positive NIPT screens, high-risk pregnancies and abnormal ultrasounds are recommended for invasive diagnostic testing using either amniocytes or chorionic villi samples. The recommended invasive tests are karyotyping, fish and chromosomal microarrays, which are either performed simultaneously or in a tiered fashion as each technology has its own advantage and respective limitations. Karyotyping is ideal for uh, the identification of whole genome low resolution structural variations, but the structural variation location and size remain inaccurate and some translocations remain cryptic. The fish panels are targeted, but the common micro deletions and micro duplications remain difficult to detect. Chromosomal microarrays are ideal for the detection of uh, copy number variations, but they are limited in their ability to detect balanced translocations, inversions, and low level mosaicism. With this, I would like to discuss uh, straight the challenges with the current technology in prenatal care with the help of an exam example. A classical scenario where a screen positive NIPT or a high risk pregnancy is recommended for invasive prenatal testing. CVS or amniocentesis is performed and the cells are cultured. A stat fish shows a normal report. Karyotyping is performed. And again, in this case, the karyotyping shows a normal profile. However, with chromosomal microarray, we observe a deletion on chromosome 7. So a geno genetic abnormality is detected with the help of CMA and a diagnosis is reached. If the CMA was performed simultaneously to karyotyping, it adds to the cost of the test. Whereas if it was ordered as follow-up after a normal karyotype, it adds to the time to reach a diagnosis, which is very critical in prenatal care. So this raises a question that could we reach a definitive diagnosis in one step with one technology assay or analysis? And these are the results of the same sample with the BioNano's optical genome mapping. And on the circus plot itself, we can see the deletion on chromosome 7 and a duplication on chromosome 2 which can also be viewed at the CNV track and the SP view, and also the chromosome two duplication can be viewed at the CNV track and the SP view. So to answer my question, yes, we can reach a definitive diagnosis in one step and with one technology essay or analysis. But to probe further into this case, the duplication on chromosome two was not called out by CMA whereas it was called by the optical genome mapping and can be viewed at the level of CNV track. But in addition, what we can see is that this copy number gain is rather a tandem duplication. So I want to make two points here. The first is that you can reach a definitive diagnosis in one step and you can identify the clinically relevant structural variations that are detected by the current methods. The second point is that with this technology, you are bound to identify additional structural variations, uh, which are either not identified or called by the current cytogenetic technologies. With this in purview, I would like to move now to the Sapphire workflow and the validation study. So the Sapphire workflow is absolutely similar to what Dr. Hasty presented in the introduction. The only modification that appears in the prenatal setting is that the starting material, the cells are amniocytes or chorionic villi cells, which is actually the starting material for any uh, conventional cytogenetic method at present. In our prenatal study, we have tested 19 samples so far, of which one is a trio. 
All cultured amnio samples were tested with cytogenomic methods, which is karyotyping with fish or chromosomal microarray. All samples tested on OGM were blinded to the cytogenetics data. Further, the accuracy and precision was measured at the level of sites, operators, and instruments. Now, as optical genome mapping identifies a plethora of structural variations, uh, I wanted to discuss the representative cases. I'll start with common trisomies, trisomy 21 and trisomy 13. An example of sex chromosome aneuploidy, a case of mosaic Turner syndrome, and then move to complex structural variants, other SP classes such as trisomy 8, and a case, a normal profile where no clinically relevant structural variation or copy number variation was detected with optical genome mapping or traditional cytogenetic genetic methods. Case one is an example of trisomy 21, which is the most common live born trisomy and has an instance of one in 600 to one in 800. I want to highlight two points in this slide. One is that when you open the BioNano access software, the first data that you see is actually a circus plot. So on the circus plot itself, you can see the trisomy 21 and again on chromosome 15. The second point I want to make is about the filtration criteria. So if you filter out against the BioNano control population, you land up with the rare SPs in this genome, which are enumerated here. For clinicians that are used to looking at the CMA data, would appreciate this uh, CNB track and can see that the trisomy 21 is called out here and in the zoomed in view of the CNB track uh, looking at chromosome 21, which is very similar to uh, how the CMA report is. Case two is an example of trisomy 13, which is again a live born trisomy and has an instance of one in 15,000. Here again on the circus plot, we can see trisomy 13 and a copy number loss on chromosome 15. On the CNV track, we can see trisomy 13 and a copy number loss on chromosome 15. Interestingly, uh, if you see the SV track, the homozygous deletion is called out here, uh, both at the level of such a variation and the CNV track. This homozygous deletion was not called out by karyotyping. Case three is an example of mosaic Turner syndrome. Uh, on the circus plot itself, we can see the loss of chromosome X. And again, we can see in the CNB track, a mosaic loss of chromosome X, which is mosaic Turner syndrome. With these examples, I would now like to move to cases with complex structural variations. In this example, we see a translocation 15 to 21 and a rearrangement on chromosome 15. This is a zoomed in view of chromosome 15 and chromosome 21 showing the translocation and copy number gain on chromosome 15. The CNV track also shows the copy number state of chromosome 15. If we dive deep into uh, chromosome 15 and look at more closely, we see that there are two segments with a copy number state of three. If we look at, at the SV track, what we see is that these two regions are actually fused. And if we zoom into this map, we see it is in the inverted orientation. So what is represents is that if you consider this lower arrow as the chromosome segment with a copy number state of three is actually fused with this segment again with a copy number state of three as it is inverted and then continues in this orientation of the chromosome. For the sake of simplicity, you can uh, derive your own ideograms based on optical genome mapping data. Here we have uh, represented chromosome 15 as segments A, B, C, and D, and chromosome 21 as segment E. On chromosome 15, segment A and C are the segments with CN state of 3. 
So translocation 1521 is actually simple where this segment D of chromosome 15 translocates to 21 and results in derivative 21. Because we saw the inversion which results in a foldback fusion with this segment of chromosome A, a derivative 15 results. Now, when this blinded data was compared to karyotype in fish, it was found 100% concordant uh, with karyotyping in fish. On the karyotype, you see two arrows that show derivative 15 and derivative 21. The derivative 15 results from a dicentric uh, 15 with a duplication of chromosome 15q and the other derivative 21 results from a translocation of 1521. The FISH studies performed on the metaphase confirm the duplication of chromosome 15 using the SNRPIN probe tabled in red. Another example of a complex structural variation is the case one where we had observed trisomy 21, but we did not discuss the copy number gain on chromosome 15. Again, the CNV tracks showing the zoomed in view of trisomy 21 and gain on chromosome 15. Looking more closely at chromosome 15, we see that there are actually two segments, one with a copy number state of four and one with a copy number state of three. If you look closely that uh, the region with copy number state of three is actually inverted and if we zoom into this region, we see that there is an overlap of the copy number region of three with copy number region of four. Again, the lower arrow represents this part of the chromosome with CN state of four and this region of skin state of three is actually inverted and fused and continues with this region of chromosome uh, 15. Again, an ideogram can be derived based upon the OGM data and uh, we see a two normal copies of 15 and an additional derivative 15 which results from the foldback fusion of this segment of 15B and aligns and fuses with the segment of 15A resulting in derivative 15. The trisomy 21 was clear from the circus plot and uh, the CMV track. What I want to highlight is that the OGM data is 100% concordant with karyotyping in fish, but OGM in one SA detected both the trisomy 21 and the identity of the marker chromosome. As you can see in the karyotype data, it identified three copies of 21, but the marker chromosome is not identified. The metaphase and interface fish identified the marker chromosome to be chromosome 15 material. Case 5 is an example of trisomy 8, and we can see uh, in the circus plot the copy number gain on the entire chromosome 8 and again on chromosome 13. Again, the CNV track shows the gain of entire chromosome 8, which is trisomy 8. However, on chromosome 13, what we observe is that this gain is not a simple copy number state of 3, but rather a complex structural variation. As this region of the genome duplicates in tandem, but it becomes complicated as this segment of the genome is inserted between the tandem duplication in inverted orientation, which is uh, becomes evident from this uh, inverted orientation of the labels. I wanted to say here that uh, as we look on these maps, these complex structural variants uh, start becoming obvious and they, they do not remain complex, at least to your eye. Again, this is the karyotype for the same case and we see a trisomy 8. However, the uh, duplication on chromosome 13 was missed by karyotype. Case 6 is an example where no clinically relevant such a variation or copy number variations were detected with optical genome mapping or even not with uh, karyotyping and re represents a true negative case. 
in this validation study, five samples were uh, run at two sites and there was 100% concordance between sites, between operators, between instruments, and also at the level of data. When compared to karyotyping fish and CMA, optical genome mapping shows a 100% concordance uh, with respect to identifying clinically relevant structure variations and copy number variations. And it identified uh, in four cases that I have discussed additional findings which were missed by karyotyping or CMA. So to conclude uh, this presentation, uh, I can begin by saying that invasive prenatal testing is recommended after a positive NIPT screen and for high-risk pregnancies. Karyotyping fish and CMA are the recommended tests employed by routine cytogenetics labs. Optical genome mapping has the potential to identify all the structure variants that are currently identified by the traditional cytogenetic methods, but also better characterize these structure variations. The OGM data in this study is 100% concordant with karyotyping fish and CMA. Uh, this data is our path to an LDT on OGM for prenatal applications. And it has several advantages that it, it has a reduced hands-on time, uh, a faster turnaround time with sample to reporting in four days. And it is cost effective as compared to the combined cost of karyotyping fish and CMA. We have also published recently a commentary on the application of optical genome mapping uh, in the prenatal setting, which discusses several examples of different structure variation classes, uh, including fragile X. With this, I would like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Ravindra Kole, who is the Director of Cytogenetics and Molecular Lab, Dr. Ashish Mondal, and our collaborators at University of Mississippi, Dr. Feribos Olvier, Dr. Suzanne Hurley, and uh, obviously the bio-nanogenomics team. I would also take this opportunity to invite you to our posters, which are on the utility of optical genome mapping in prenatal setting, which I have just discussed, and also the application uh, in brain tumors. Thank you so much for your attention. So guys, I want you guys to drop me some comments, tell me your thoughts and feelings. What did you manage to pick up from this? Also, if you're able to join my Patreon to help me pay for events and to get into events like this, please join the Patreon. Or you can join channel memberships, it's only 99 cents a month. But if you're unable to, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe on this video means the world to me. Thank you so much for your love and support and I wish you all the best. Mr. Investor over and out, baby.